Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth build. Long before the days of automobiles, if you wanted to get around on wheels, you had to pedal. I have the Penny Farthing here, the very large front wheel of the vehicle that I'm going to put together. Let's tear this open, see what it looks like, and how it goes together. Penny Farthing. We have two metal sheets with very, very big wheels. And we have the instructions with very big wheels. Okay, fold this in half. And we're going to focus on the top page. For the top half, we have the usual metal earth. 3D with a wrinkle there, how I'm using the line drawing of one of the sheets and the build, built to model, a little what looks like a rib, or not a rib, a backbone, the back of the bike with the notes about insertion tabs, fold lines, insertion holes, the usual needle nose pliers are helpful for assembly, and this is kind of an older directions or older assembly flow chart. You have the legend, the blue circle is indicating when you see that in the directions to insert and bend the tab over 90 degrees. The green triangle, when you see that in the directions, is indicating to twist the tab 90 degrees. And a little note, pull and screw metal tabs 90 degrees to tighten. So pulling does help if, if you can actually not pull off of it by mistake. And then down here we have the two metal sheets. There's, there's not that one. This is here. Let's pull this up a little bit. And here. There we are. And these numbers point to the different parts so you can find them on the metal sheets. Moving over to the upper right quarter, we have the assembly flow chart. The start of it with very big part one. Part two, curve that and add it on. Follow the arrows you add on part three. And you just follow the arrows and add on the parts as you go along. Got a little bit of a note here. Bend three red tabs to one direction and three green tabs to the other. Interesting. And you just follow along, building it as it's shown. Then you go down to the bottom half to this quarter here and continue building and following the arrows and then this quarter here 11 do all of this 12 so on and so forth then we move to the back and we fold it in half again top quarter 13 14 continue on this quarter bottom of the back page Follow through, and there you go with the completed model. Let's talk tools. I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build. I have needle nose pliers. I have flat nose pliers. I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. I also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits, and I use them a lot. When it comes to shape and rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. We've looked briefly over the directions and at the metal sheets, talked a little bit about some tools. Let's put it together. I tried to choose a drill bit 
a little larger than the finished curved part. That way, if I make a mistake, going smaller is easier than prying the part back open and going bigger. As is often the case, I sometimes bend over tabs instead of twisting them to make things look neater. It took me a few minutes to work out just how to put the wheels together. Part 1 had some slots around the outer edge of the wheel. Part 4 does not. All the tabs on part 4 fall towards part 1 and into the slots. Then the tabs on part 1 bend towards different sides. Basically half of them go to one side, the other half to the other. They're staggered. No tabs side by side fold in the same direction. Bending the tabs on the outer edge of the wheel without accidentally bending the outer edge of the wheel is nigh impossible. Several times I had to straighten the outer rim back out. Luckily parts 5 and 6 cover the wheels and help straighten it out. This video has been edited down. I've not shown all the different attempts, adjustments, or retries of this build. I also clip out parts where I am studying directions, searching for and clipping parts, and sometimes repetitive steps. It may make this kit look like it comes together easier than it did, but there are a lot of bending and adjusting of parts to make things fit. Work slowly, be patient, and take your time.
I had initially bent the bottom section of part 9 the right way, then had doubts bent it the other way, then when I attached the two halves realized I had bent it the right way the first time and had to bend it again. The two pedals fold up differently. The second one warped when I folded it. I had to go back and straighten out the metal. I have not had to pull the hobby knife out in a while, but pointed tweezers could not get under the tabs to pry them out.
like the smaller wheel, it is difficult to bend the tabs without bending the outer rim area. One of the tabs broke and left a gap. Good thing the outer sections also pull the parts together. Oops, slipped, it happens. I give you the penny farthing. The old bike with a really big front wheel. This was a lot more challenging than I expected it to be, or I should say a lot more complicated. And, and the pieces that, that the wheel, the way it comes together, there's so many parts. And it really threw, from, threw me for a loop at first, so it took me a bit to figure it out. Once I kind of got the hang of it, it did come together faster. The bigger wheel was easier than the smaller one, but it was just way more complex than I expected. I was originally thinking that this might end up being a quick build, but no. I feel like it needs more explanation and a little more video. 
The penny farthing took about an hour and a half to build, which is at least a half hour more than I expected. It was fun in the end. It looks really nice. It's one of those models I thought was going to end up trashing it with my big hands and getting frustrated. But in the end, it doesn't look too bad. You can definitely see the imperfections, but it's okay. I'm not ashamed of it. If this is one of those models you're looking at thinking this will be a good starter or an easy one to do, it's just a bike. No. No, it is more complicated than I would have guessed. So that was a big surprise to me. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, any requests, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. I've got a lot to build and not enough time. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.